Dad. Have you ever had a day where you just feel so delightful and proper and spiffy and good? I guess that's what they call grandparent magic. Order to order. Okay, gentlemen, Luke magic. Because that's who we visited. We had a brunch, a proper sparring match, lunch, picked new eggs, and ended with high tea. Gentleman Luke seemed really impressed with how Elmer and Zilla had been growing. <laughs> Gotta go, Dad. Luca just requested some road trip songs in the SS Speedmeister. No, I did not. Duty calls. Welcome to Pearl's Pokédex. Hello, friends. We are back. We back. We find Pearl and Luca riding along Route 3 in the SS Speedmeister, having procured some new eggs from the daycare and Gentleman Luke and having left a couple of Pokemon there. On this pokey day, nothing's ever in my way. On this pokey day. Order, 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 order. Good pull. Thank you. <laughs> As you all are traveling along Route 3... Sing uh, along, Luca! Pokey <laughs> Day! Wow, so much has changed your singing uh, well, on this poke. Well, changed the lyrics on me, so now I don't know where I'm all going. Right. Darn it, just like that. When in doubt, or... I think I'm going to leave that to Seely. Or, 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 or. Yeah, she's like, you better. <laughs> Who is <laughs> cramped in the sidecar with you. It's like that really normal human experience when you're on a motorcycle sidecar. Sure. And there's a beanbag inside that sidecar. As you do. And you are sitting on the beanbag inside the sidecar. <laughs> yes. Totally just, normal. You know how people do. People do? <laughs> So you all are traveling on Route 3, which is a lovely uh, scenic little route. You have not actually really been on it before, uh, but it is what <laughs> connects Bolette City to Tremella Town. This route is uh, pretty well kept, similarly to the gardens of Tremella Town. It seems neatly manicured along the way, and it's a, a well taken care of road, well paved. As you all are driving, you see that there are, you know, small Pokemon running around here and there. To the west is Bay Bolette. It's not directly up against this route, but it's a stone's throw over yonder. And then <laughs> over, over to the east, you can see in the distance Feather Forest and Feather Rock. Mm. And even further to the northeast, the Kanoko Range. Wow, good view. It's a great view. So on this lovely little route is, uh, well, let's go ahead and roll for the weather for today. Oh, okay. On this pokey day, beautiful weather in the town. On this pokey day. Hit me. Nothing standing in my way. <sighs> I know that was just like the regular lyrics, but I, I, it still felt applicable. That was amazing. I'm really hoping it's raining. TBH. Why? Just because I've described this lovely, beautiful yeah, scene, really, and then you're like, yeah. mm, what if it just <laughs> rained, actually? Yeah. Not raining, but a cloudy day. Ah, I love it. Some nice, solid cloud cover. So today's boosted types are fairy fighting and poison. Ooh, ah. Great. So on this cloudy, pokey day, uh, what do you all want to do? I think that it seems like you're taking it kind of easy, just gradually making your way up to Bolette. You had your nice pit stop at the daycare. By the time you finished up there, drove through Tremella Town. It would have been a little bit later in the afternoon, so it's up to you if you wanted to have just made a quick pit stop there, take it easy, maybe grab a bite to eat behind a restaurant in the behind alley. Behind a restaurant? Like you did with... Oh, no. I was like, I can show my face in this town. <laughs> They haven't completely outlawed me. No, like you did with Ica. Yeah. But wait, this is her her town. You you drove through there as you were leaving the daycare because you were on oh, Route nice. 4. Route 4 connects to Tremella Town, which then tea, goes though, north. We just though, so if it's not dinner, we're okay. That's true. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess it was high tea. So really, it's just late. It's the same day, but later in the afternoon. But because we're in a new episode, I felt like rolling for the weather again. Ta-da. I'm fine with that. So it is later in the afternoon. There we go. We've established time and place. Boom. But it is cloudy. It only took your first 10 minutes of this podcast. It folks. wasn't Watch 10 out. Minutes. I'm just messing with you. Okay. Um, hey, it Luca. was five. <laughs> hey, Luca. Yeah, what's up? Are we going to have to camp outside tonight? 
Uh, no, I mean, this is not a particularly long route, so we'll be in Bolette, you know, by this evening. Oh, okay. All right, Celie, we may not get s'mores tonight. Or, or? I know you were planning on them. I know you hit the treadmill so that you could eat some s'mores tonight. Or, or, or. It wasn't all for naught. <laughs> you should just do that regardless, Celie. It shouldn't be that you have a reward just because you did that. Or, 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 or. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Do you say it? not specifying who you're supporting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pearl is learning how to be diplomatic for once in her life. ba da Hey, neutral. Okay. Um, so what are you doing? We're just on the road. Great. Uh, would you like to keep an eye out for any Pokemon yeah. or anything or trainers? Or totally. what's 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 the vibe? Uh, both of those things. I'm in. I'm in it to win it. Cool beans. Well, which would you prefer to do? Like, do you want to specifically keep an eye out for any trainers nearby? Or do you want to make a little pit stop and see if you can find anything in the tall grass slash flowers around the place? Oh, look, I got to stretch my legs. Oh, uh, yeah. See, gotten much larger in this thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. I... It's a big difference from having a seal to a dugong in a sidecar, and honestly, I I don't know that it's the safest thing. But we can still make progress. We're really veering to the right a lot. We're going to walk through the tall grass, but still in the same direction. Great. Are you looking specifically more so for, like, Pokemon to battle? Are you hoping to find something that you might want to catch? And who do you have at the front of your party? I have Elmer at my party, and surprise me with all the rest of those questions. Great. On this pokey day. Would you like to look for any specific Pokemon or types or anything? Or do you want to just walk in the tall grass and go left, right, left, I'm right? I'm going walking in the tall spots? grass. <laughs> I'm just going for that full Pokemon experience. We can't control many of these things. Love to see it. All right. So you get out of the Speedmeister and you start walking around. And uh, Luca hops out on the other side and just begins looking around a bit as well. As you all park for a moment to stretch your legs. Legs. Feels good to let the old trainer legs take a walk. I mean, it's been a decade since I've done something like this. The tall grass has actually gotten shorter because I've grown an inch at least, if not five, a foot. It's amazing my knees are still working. I don't have that rare bone condition <laughs> from my growth spurt. As you are walking around in the tall grass, go ahead and roll 2d6. <sighs> oh no. What do I add? It's just a flat 2d6. It's a three. All right, a three. And then Luca is walking around in the tall grass as well. He's going to lead with Bonnaroo for whatever and then probably do the old switch out, the old EXP switch out. Uh, go ahead and roll 2d6 for Luca as well. Ah, oh, Luca crushed it. Nine. So a three for you and a nine for Luca. Okay, so as you are walking around with Elmer and Luca has Bonnaroo out and is still just trying to, you know, get a feel for what's going on with this funky little Bulbasaur. As you are walking along in the tall grass, you actually pass under a tree and a bird swoops oh. down. A tranquil flies down towards you and Elmer. And Luca, like, finds uh, himself over near what looks like it might be, you know, a, a berry tree or something and is about to check that out a little further. And a little white and blue squirrel looking guy <gasps> skitters down at him. Ah, dope. Roll initiative. <laughs> Against the Tranquil and Pachirisu. Seven for me, nine for Luca. So with initiative rolled, our order is going to be the Pachirisu, Luca, Tranquil, and then Pearl. So the Pachirisu is going to skitter down from this tree and seeing that uh, Bonnaroo looks like a threat to its uh, apricorns or berries or whatever it is it's got holed away in there. It is going to rush forward and try to do a little spark attack which is going to be a full success. Ooh. You don't particularly love to see it. <laughs> all right, with the full success, that's going to be all in all 11 points of damage Yay! out of Bonnaroo's 13. They have got some really good berries protected. They uh, are, yeah. Violently protecting those berries. We are uh, seeing some classic Chippendale against Donald Duck moves here. 100% that is not great for Bonnaroo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> is that Bonnaroo? No. Oh, no. I really need to grab Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo just stays completely still and just says, 
Boba. <laughs> As that with that Luca full bed. success, uh, she's also paralyzed. That oh no was also Luca bed. So. Oh no. Okay. And All you right. Said, you said it like oh no. It wasn't <laughs> oh, me. No. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's what the Pachirisu does, uh, and immediately puts Bonnaroo in a very bad position because she is still level one. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right, but that is its turn, which is going to take us to Luca. What's he gonna do? Oh, no. Luca, you need anything over there? No, we're fine. We're okay. fine. Let's go to Zilla. Great. You are going to swap out to Zilla as his main action. Uh, he says, all right, Bonnaroo, uh, get back in here. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Zilla, come out here. You got this. This will be good for you. Jar, jar. As Bonnaroo just well, that goes back to the ball. Slowly, Grandma walks to that ball. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it sweet time. Oh, you know it. Okay, cool. That is going to be a Lucas' turn, which is then going to take us over to the Tranquil, who is going to rush down toward Elmer with a wing attack. Elmer and I are making flower bracelets in the grass right now. Nice. Uh, caught completely unawares while making these flower bracelets. That is going to be a seven, so a mixed success. So taking into account Elmer's defense, that is going to be four points of flying damage from this wing attack as the Tranquil whooshes down. Elmer is very upset because the whoosh messes up the braid that she was working on with the grass and um, spreads the flowers away. So she responds with a yawn. She yawns angrily. <laughs> she does that <laughs> as the little cloud just sort of envelops the tranquil for a moment as it tries to shake it off, but it does appear to be getting sleepy. Elmer's a really good reminder for me that I should learn to turn the other cheek. <laughs> and just yawn at them instead. Makes perfect sense. That's how the old saying goes, doesn't it? Yeah, turn no, I'm pretty sure that's yawn. exactly how it goes. Yeah. yeah. That is your turn, which is going to take us back up to the top with the Pachirisu, who's going to use a swift against Larvitar. Ooh. Which is just barely going to be a mixed success and is going to deal... Six points of damage to Zilla after accounting for her defense. That's the Pachirisu's turn, which is then going to take us to Luca. Luca is going to tell Zilla to bulldoze. Nice. All right. Goes to hit that bulldoze. Go ahead and roll to hit. Oh, yeah. You're cooking with oil now, Salvatore. That is a 14. A 14. You love to see it. Go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, 12. Boom. Okay, 12 minus its defense, but then doubled with it being super effective is going to come out to 16 points. Booyah. Of super effective damage. That is Lucas' turn as Zilla uses that bulldoze. That is then going to take us to the Tranquil, who whooshes down once again, but this time is going to do an air slash. That is going to be a mixed success. Dealing six points of flying damage to the Togepi. And then Pearl, it is your turn as the Tranquil crashes to the ground and falls asleep. Ah, uh, good night, sweet prince. Do I need to roll how many rounds to fall asleep? Yes, please. Go ahead and roll to see how many rounds the Tranquil is asleep. Oh, no. One round of sleeping. Upset. And then on your turn, what would you like to do? Let's do a turn. Excellent. Go ahead and roll to hit with advantage as the Tranquil is asleep. <laughs> Ten. Ten. A full success. Excellent. So go ahead and roll your 4d6 plus three. Ooh, that is hefty for the little Togepi. Come on. I mean, that's the, a the hefty egg. The egg does a big hit. <laughs> Cause she loves me, she does, she loves me, she does. That's a bad imaginary song I made up. Um, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. Do I add anything? Uh, it's 46 plus three, because it's one from her attack and then an 12. extra two from your, oh, 12. 12. I rolled pretty low on those dice. Yeah, it sounded like it. That's going to come out to eight points of damage to the Tranquil. That is your turn, which then takes us back up to the Pachirisu, who's just going to go for another swift attack. Swifty. 
with a mixed success is gonna be seven points of damage. Oh, but wait, it's actually four because of Zilla's rock typing. So from the first one, she actually took three and now has taken four from this one Dang. from having the damage as it is not very effective being a normal type move. Uh, but that will then take us to Zilla. Let's go ahead and use Bulldoze again. Sweet. Go ahead and roll hit. Oh, eight. Great. That is going to be a mixed success. So go ahead and roll that damage. Ten. 10 is going to come out to 6 double to 12 points of super effective damage as the ground keeps on getting just thrown up and smacked into the Pachirisu, who's just like, bah, 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 and just little cheeks are sparking. And then that will take us to the Tranquil, who is asleep during its turn and wakes up at the end. Pearl, mm-hmm. back to you. Let's do another return. Great. Another return. Go ahead and roll to hit. Not with advantage this time because it is awake. Oh, Great. That's an 11, sir. An 11, a full success. Roll that 4d6 plus 3 yeah. once again. Let's make this count this time. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Let's put a dent in this bird's beak, Elmer. <laughs> Elmer looks at me like, what? I'm like, yeah, sometimes I use stronger language when I'm training, Elmer. <laughs> put the dent in the beak. <laughs> oh, that was better. 16. Cool, 16, so that's going to be 12 points of damage to the Tranquil. Very nice. Yeah, that's right. You're a hard-boiled egg now. (laughs) Tough. Excellent, excellent. Back up at the top, the Pachirisu goes to attack once again, but instead tries to give Larvitar a little sweet kiss. So go ahead and roll for Larvitar to tough it out plus personality. She does have advantage because of her friendship bracelet. Aw, yeah. That was helpful. We got eight. Eight. Nice. A mixed success. She is going to be confused theoretically for six rounds because the Pachirisu rolled the max, but she's got advantage to avoid it slash break it. Cool. (laughs) But it is then going to be (laughs) Zilla's turn. So go ahead and roll for her confusion first. So roll two D6. Six and a three. Oh, a six? Yeah. Oh, she immediately breaks the confusion oh. with the natural six. Oh, she looks at the friendship bracelet, looks to Celie. She's like, oh, I forgot about this. So, oh. <laughs> and Celie's like waving her wrist with the friendship bracelet. Like, yeah. That's right. I'm not confused by your sweet kiss. Oh, no, love. It was. <laughs> and it knows me. <laughs> it was a, a lovely oh, little kiss, though. I am a very loved Pokemon, and I am secure in my own identity. <laughs> And I don't need your kisses to prove that, bruv. Therefore, I am not confused. No, I know who I am, and I know what I stand for, and I know I'm going to kick your butt. And I'm a strong, powerful woman. <laughs> I don't need no squirrel. Use agent power. <laughs> Channel that strong, powerful woman energy. You are love. Ten. Ten is going to be a full success on the ancient That's power. That's right. She is love. She knows it. She's just like doing a little TED talk. That's her ancient power this time. It's like her standing on the podium saying, and you know what? I put on my eyeliner each day because I want to, not because I feel like I have to. I'm beautiful without it. <laughs> Go I ahead. I need my triangle eyeliner, but I do it because I like it. I'll do it anyway. It is for me. It's Go. for me. It's not for anybody else. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your 2d6 plus four. 12. All right, 12, so that is going to be eight points of damage to the Pachirisu. It is not super effective. But, man, that speech was worth it, so. She feels like her heart was super affected by her own encouraging words. Great. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. That will then take us to the Tranquil, who is going to use Swagger. So go ahead and have Elmer roll to tough it out. Plus personality. Oh, bless it. Okay, 10. 10, nice, full success. She is not confused. You know we got that swagger. Oh, we may be cute, but we got that swagger. Hey, ho. And and Elmer does a little drop down. She spins around. She does. Yeah, like break break dancing spin on herself. (laughs) Little egg spin. And then what does she do? As it is your turn. Poses amazingly on the side of her hip and then uh, uses return. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she she lures the bird in close with these sweet dance moves and then just goes to smack it. It's a nine. A nine to mix success. So roll 4d6 plus two. 
The difference for her full and mixed uh, for her at this point is minimal because her attack is one. 19. Whoa. There we go, girl. Hot diggity dang. That was a great roll. It's going to be 15 points of damage from that powerful break dancing uh, return. Oh, yeah. We got that swagger bird. <laughs> the tranquil uh, looks like it is not having the best time after that. Okay. That is then going to take us back up to the top with the Pachirisu, who is uh, sad that its sweet kiss was not as effective as it had wanted, and so is instead just going to go to try another swift. That time with a full success. With her special defense, it's going to be five and then a half to three points of damage as it shoots out these little sparky stars that just do not seem to phase Zilla very much. And then it is Luca's turn. All right, let's do bulldoze. Sweet. Let's go back to the one we know works. That is a 9, 10, 11, 11. An 11, a full success. Love to see it. Go ahead and roll that damage. 2d6 plus 7. All right, come on, Zilla. Really mean this one. Yes, she did. 11 plus attack. Plus, plus seven, seven because it's oh, her attack and perfect. stab. 18. Great. 18. So that's going to be 14 double to 28 points of super effective ground damage. Goodbye, as she just my squirrely friend. Pulls up a big old hunk of dirt, slams it into the Pachirisu. That is enough to knock out the Pachirisu as it goes to skitter away. Yeah, that's wrong. It says it's one of the best things I've learned is get away from toxic Pokemon like you. So <laughs> go on and get. <laughs> As she is continuing to yell, all we hear is "Dar, Dar, Dar, Lavatar." But yeah, she's she she's giving lecturing. this full speech. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> love it. Get on that soapbox. Pearl literally gives her a soapbox. <laughs> right. Anyway, as I was saying, that is going to take us back to the tranquil, who is going to go for another air slash with a ten total. Bad damage, though. I'm not upset about it. That is going to be five points of damage to Elmer. Hit me with your best shot, then fly away. Come on, that's all you got. Well, and then what would you like for Elmer to do? All right, just for the fun, let's use my to try to close it out. Okay, go ahead. We're feeling funky. <laughs> all right, for metronome, go ahead and first off, roll a d6. Five. That's one of my favorite moves, guys. And we're just singing, hit me with your best shot. Ba -na, ba -na. Ba -na. Come on and hit me with your best shot. Metronome, metronome. Hit me with your best shot. Use metronome. Okay, now roll another d6. Two. So she is going to use TM52. Woo! TM52. Whatever that means to you. Imagine something really cool happens now. Elmer uses bounce. Woo! I can fly high in the sky, reading rainbow. That's Elmer's style. So I good pee in the sky. Can, yes. <laughs> I can go twice as high. Take a look. Look, it's in a TM. Flying Elmer. Elmer. I can do anything. Pokemon with Pearl. I love my trainer. Love her trainer. She's up in the air right now. She'll Whoa. come down next turn. <laughs> she just she just wiggles her little little Togepi nub and hands and then boom, just up in the air. You like can't even see her because she bounces a very high. I just look at the bird and I'm like, she amazes me every day. Quill? <laughs> <laughs> the Tranquil is uh, going to have disadvantage to try and do its uh, air cutter attack because it's... Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Toga P. Where's Toga P? I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, with the disadvantage, just like tries to send a blast of air up toward the Togepi, but just completely misses uh, <laughs> as it's just flying around, just sort of waiting for uh, Elmer to come back down. Go ahead and roll for Elmer to hit with the bounce, bounce. attack. Oh, I really hope this works. It's so fun. What would I add? Agility. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Agility's oh, plus wow, three. Oh, wow, my agility's actually really good. Okay, um, that's a nine. Nice. Go ahead and roll 3d6. Nine. Great, so that is going to be five points of damage to the Tranquil, and Elmer is now uh, riding it. Yes, she is. She slams onto it, and the Tranquil's like, Argh. Yeah, that's a tough pokey. <laughs> uh, that's as- what I'm looking for, Elmer. Grab it by the feathers. As Elmer is riding it, it is going to attempt to shake her off with a gust, which is going to hit and be a full success. So uh, please go ahead and just uh, just roll for Elmer to uh, tough it out plus Mike just to see if she's holding on. A uh, seven. A seven. Okay, a mixed success. Uh, so it's, it's precarious, but she is just barely holding on. One-handed bull ride! And Elmer takes five points of damage. That will then take us to you, Pearl, as Elmer is continuing to ride the Tranquil, albeit uh, just barely. Okay, she raises the hand up and one hand is, and say, use return! And she slaps that bird's booty. <laughs> Roll to slap bird butt. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a nine. Excellent. A nine is going to be a mixed success, so go ahead and roll 46 plus two. Yeah! Ah, uh, ah, uh, Elmer, you so strong. Elmer, we love you. Hey, hey! 20. Ooh, 20. With 16 points of damage, her little hand slams down on the Tranquil, who, uh, with that big hit from that return, uh, starts falling out of the sky. And as it just starts falling, it just starts doing just a full-on nosedive, and Elmer is, like, falling off of its back, and Elmer is actually in the air. She does three super cool flips and ends perfectly balanced on her tippy toes. Not quite. Oh, no. As she's falling from the sky, as she is no longer on the back of this Tranquil, who goes into this nosedive and then starts flying away, very rocky, uh, very unstable. I can't do anything. Albert, you can do it. Keep flying. Use bounce again if you know that. (laughs) Don't fall, my sweet egg. My egg's going to crack. I can't do anything. Catch your pokey. Pearl, just open your arms. Fall into my arms. <laughs> you are standing below where Elmer is falling. Just... I think she likes it, actually. <laughs> In a position where hopefully you'll be able to catch her as she makes it down. But as she's falling, Elmer begins to glow. <gasps> Elmer... As she's coming down towards you, you see her little egg body expands to where she has like a head that is separate from the body and her little arms and feet get a little longer. And most importantly, from her back, she sprouts some little wings. What? And as she does, she's about to fall into your arms, but then whoosh. She flies back up in the air and begins doing all these adorable sweet flips as Elmer evolves from a togepi into a togetic. She can do anything. She's got her wings. We're so proud. Our togetic. Way to go, Elmer. Rock, you're so powerful, and you can do that all right. That's right. You are a strong young lady. <laughs> Zilla is still on the soapbox. That is correct. That's right. Look at you, little squirrel, wherever you are, I know where you are, and this is what I'm talking about. It's called empowerment. That's right, the power was in you all along, that's right. You just had to trust yourself and be yourself. If you fly in the sky, you can go twice as high. (laughs) Wow, I'm motivated, Luca. It's the same. (laughs) I don't even know what she's saying, but it feels very powerful. Okay, come on, Elmer. And Elmer, I want to give you a hug. And, like, I feel like Elmer is just so happy. She, like, starts to, like, tease me out where she's, like, flying down. And then she, like, comes back up and she starts flying out. And then I'm like, okay, that was cute. Come on down. Come on down for a hug. She goes, and she comes back up. I'm like, Elmer! <laughs> <laughs> but she does she fly down does, into your yeah. arms. After messing with you for a minute, she oh flies down goodness. into your arms. Oh, this is one of my favorite evolutions. I just think it's so right and so good. And every step of the way feels like Elmer to me.
friends, Jonah here to say thank you for listening to Postcards from Pearl. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our awesome partner, Dice Envy. This week, check out some of their Elmer-approved sets like Rainbow and Party Down. You know you need more colors and glitter in your life. You can get 10% off of your purchase at Dice Envy by going to DiceEnvy.com slash QuestCo or by using promo code QuestCo at checkout. That's Q-U-E-S-T-C-O for 10% off of your entire order. If you're a fan of what we do here on Quest Company Jr. and you want to help us out, please go to our page on the Apple Podcasts app or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. It's a huge help to us and we read every review that comes in. And if you really love what we do here at Quest Company Jr. and you want to take that next step in supporting us, please consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. For as little as $2 a month, you can help us with necessary expenses, help us continue to improve the quality of the show, and get access to exclusive content and patron rewards. If you'd like to give us that support, you could do so at patreon.com slash questcompanypodcast. You can also find the link to the Patreon on our website, questcompanyjunior.com. If you'd like to contact us, you could do so directly through our website or by finding us on Instagram and Twitter at questcojunior. You can also hang out with us in our Quest Company Discord and get all the latest updates on Monster Fight and Pocket Monster Fight. The link to that is on our website and Twitter. We know that word of mouth is the best way to get people listening to a new podcast, and that is especially true for independent shows like ours. So we would love to see you posting about the podcast and telling your friends about us. If we see you tweeting about us or posting fan art using hashtag QuestCodeJr or hashtag Postcards from Pearl, you might get a character named after you on the show. And if you have fan art of the podcast you want to share, just make sure when you post it to tag us so that we can see it. Quest Company Jr. is a proud member of Podicon Go, a group of independent podcasts supporting high-quality content that's fun for the whole family. Podicon Go is your reliable corner of the internet for the kind of podcasts everyone can enjoy, with shows ranging from animal facts to stories to audio dramas to RPG actual plays and more. Check them out at PodiconGo.com. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the amazing artists whose music is featured in this episode. Thank you to Foolboy Media for the song Video Game Land. Thank you to Zame for Route 201 Legends Arrangement, Battle Unova Wild Pokemon, Battle Sinnoh Frontier Brain Remastered, and 10 Carat Hill Remix. Thank you to Maker for Viridian Forest Waltz, Marnie, and Piers Battle Anthem. Thank you to Pokenerd Scott for a whole bunch of original tracks. Brawling with the Bunch, Fighting Dirty, In Flight Instigation, and Something Nasty This Way Comes. Thank you to Glitch X City for the song's prologue, New Horizon. Horizon and Pokemon Sword and Shield Rival Battle theme remix, but it's kind of 16-bit. Thank you to Michael and Game Chops for the song Route 3. Thanks to Ben Briggs and Game Chops for DJ KK and Rush Hour. Thank you to Proto Dome for On the Origin of Species. Thanks to Rock Out for Trium Music. And thank you to TabletopAudio.com for providing the ambient sounds. That's all for me, so let's get back to the action. Thank you for joining us here at Quest Company Jr. So with that, Elmer's gotten a bunch of goodies as part of her level up. What is she rocking now that she is a Togetic at level 12? Where do I begin? I guess I'll start with a moveset. Nice. Yes. So- a, g- a good thing. A very good place to start. <laughs> she now has Draining Kiss. It's a fairy move and it works with 2d6 and attack. We have Magical Leaf. It's a grass move and it's 2d6 plus Patak. Spatak. And then we kept everything else the same, just because I love Yawn and Metronome and Return. But then we went ahead and gave the hidden ability. So that was a feat, and it accessed her hidden ability, Super Luck, which raises the ability's bearer's critical range by one. So if I roll an 11, that counts as a crit, which is super cool, though, because of the hustle feature. So the hustle feature uh, is another ability that 
After scoring a critical hit, the Pokemon may immediately take another main action. So hopefully I can use Super Luck and Hustle a little more. Yes, in conjunction with each other. Yes, with, with this Evo, uh, Elmer has certainly gotten more on the offensive. Which is good. I feel like we've waited for that for a while. Yeah. Um, and then battle stat wise, we increased attack. So that's now five. We increased attack to four and we increased HP to five. So now Elmer's... Uh, pretty strong. Uh, 80 health. So like, it's gonna take a couple rounds to take her down. Yeah, she's gotten she's gotten some more beef. Uh, this egg is now a little free-range chicken. Ah, uh, Elmer! <laughs> we gotta send another picture to your gentleman Luke! I know your sweater doesn't fit anymore. Wait, no, that's not what she sounds like anymore. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, it's, it's, it's mostly the same. I love it. I know your sweater doesn't fit anymore, though. I'll make you a new one. Got to make one with little wing holes because she can fly wing around holes. now. Oh, Togedick is so cute. So cute. I love it. Nice. Cool. So all in all, she's at level 12 now. Uh, Diablo got some experience from that via the EXP share. Wow, I'm still beefing up Diablo. Yes, pretty much just constantly, constantly beefing that boy. He didn't level up or anything, though. He just got some uh, more experience. And then Zilla did not level up from that, but she got some experience, and so she's still at 14. Bonnaroo, <laughs> staying alive with two hit points, though, did manage to get enough experience to level up. She oh, was nice. pretty close anyway. So she's level two now. Well, that was great. And she is not at the front of Luca's party. <laughs> can I have fettuccine at the front of mine? Yes, you can stick fettuccine at the front of your party. She's uh, using the Evio light right now. Which two stats of hers did you want to have increased by the Evio light, by the way? We can do attack and defense. Great. All right. So we're increasing both of those by two. So temporarily, while she holds the Evo light, her attack is seven and defense is five. Nice. Cool. With that, you and Luca are still here on Route 3. You're getting close to the outskirts of the southern side of Bolette City. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Keep that. <laughs> but what would you like to do as y'all continue riding along? I assume you hop back in the SS Speedmeister and are still driving along the road. Yeah, sure. I think we're looking for a trainer. Hey, Luca. Yeah, what's up? Wherever we go, whatever we do, we're gonna be trainers together. Order, order. We may not go far, but sure as a star, we, wherever we are, we're together. Order. Wherever I train, I know. Wow, it's so bad, isn't it? <laughs> wherever I train, I know he trains. Order, order. Wherever I your turn, Luca. Oh, man, you really put me on the spot here. Uh, uh, da, da, da. I don't know the words to this one. No it's fists, a, no da, fights, da, no <laughs> feuds, and no egos. Amigos. Uh, amigos. Together. Together. Again, wherever we, we train, train. Wherever, train, wherever we, we go. go. We're going to be trainers, trainers together. together. There you go. You're getting it. You're getting it now. And that's what we do while Great. we're looking for another trainer. Great. As you all are uh, singing, you, you are teaching him this particular song for your sing-along. Uh, and you see up Jonah, ahead on the hold road. On. Yes. Can you name that musical? Can I right now here on the podcast? It's a big one. Oh, I just, on the podcast? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I just don't know if okay, I Okay, well, in, in the I real life. I feel shy. You feel shy? I feel shy. But in the podcast, you can. No, but it's in gypsy. the podcast, it's I feel. It's, I'm I, giving it to you. It's which one? Did you hear me? No. Darn it. I've got these headphones on. I'm trying to let you know in the podcast. Oh, I see. Oh, it's from Gypsy, Good obviously. Good job, Jonah. Nice work. Thank you. Thank you for Anytime. that. Anytime. I'll keep in my entire struggle leading up to that point. <laughs> Let me battle you now. Let me spar it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that since Bonnaroo got roughed up and is obviously not at the front of the party now, uh, who would you like for uh, Luca to stick at the front of his party? Uh, he's probably going to give Zilla a little break, too, I would imagine. So, Matza. Great. Sticking Lotsa up front. So, 
Lots is at the front of his party, and you've got Fettuccine. Y'all are driving along, and you see a, a trainer up ahead who seems to be just going along, whistling a little tune. It's a kid who is a little bit taller than you, but shorter than Luca. Medium. He's, <laughs> he's got uh, shifty-looking blue eyes and blonde hair, and he's got a hat that's got little horns on the side, and he's wearing, like, a cool jacket. Hey, kid! Hey, what's up? Fight me! Ha! Done. And he gets, he gets like, <laughs> a serious and very, like, intense look as he's like, done. Nothing beats that in the Pokemon game. It's like, battle me now. Hey, you, fight me. Bite, bite me. <laughs> you challenge Youngster Scoot to a battle. I love the name. It's like my soul. Great. So you send out Fettuccini and Luca sends out Lotza. As oh, wow. he says, Two and one? That's not fair. Do I know? Two on one. Y'all each get to use one Pokemon. Oh, he gets one, two. He, yeah, he's oh, using two. Great. Okay, good. Double battle. Woo! So you send out Fettuccini and Lotza as he says, Okie dokie. Chad and Pat, come on out. And he sends out an Ursa ring wearing like a Letterman jacket and a backwards flat bill cap and he sends out this semi sage that's just got a gray cardigan on it's standing too much like a person go ahead Don't and roll initiative is, this is what you've come to huh this is where you're at in your life you now. said you you, you you said you wanted a trainer and this is what popped into my head all right here we are young scoot youngster scoot yeah go ahead and roll initiative uh 7 for me and a 8 for luca our order is going to be Pat, the Simi Sage, then Luca, then you, Pearl, and then Chad, the Ursa Ring. As the Simi Sage, who came out and was standing very person like, immediately leaps into monkey action. He uses a nasty plot as it begins swinging from branches and hopping up in the trees and, oh, oh, <laughs> and is going to raise its special attack. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but that is what the Simi Sage is doing. Uh, and then it is Luca's turn, as he's got lots of out. Uh, he says, uh, okay, uh, little bear against big bear. Use force palm. All right, so she <laughs> skitters forward and goes to right into Chad. Her Ten. A ten total. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All right, that is going to be 2d6 plus six. 11. 11 points of damage minus his defense. That's going to be 7 double to 14 points of super effective fighting damage against the Ursa Ring. Cool beans. That is Luca's main action. Since that was a full success, she can use her slap bracelet to bind the Ursa Ring. Oh, totally. So she's going to bind him up. That is Luca's turn, which is then going to take us to you, Pearl. What is Fettuccine going to do? Oh, man, Fettuccine's not super good for this fight, I hate to say. Let's go ahead and swap out for Diablo. All right, swapping out to Diablo. Love cool you, Fettuccine. You swap out. Great to see you, too. <laughs> I think she just comes back and just sort of noodles up by you, but you send out Diablo, who just... There's a big whoosh of that black flame on the tail. That will then take us to Chad the Ursa Ring, who, being all wrapped up with lots of here, is going to try to use a hammer arm. Try as you might, sir. With a minus one because lots is wearing her assault vest. Oh my gosh. She's what borrowed is it. Lotsa? She's borrowed it She's from like Hercules. She's like ready for like a full lockdown war. <laughs> and that is only going to be a mixed success. And the super effective damage is negated by the fact that she's fluffy. So all in all, that just comes out to a minimal amount of damage. That's going to be four points of damage to Lotsa. That is Chad's turn, which is going to take us back to Pat who now attempting to have the element of surprise here uh, jumps out of the tree and goes for a low kick on Diablo. Oh man, not my Charmeleon. Scoot, back off. That is gonna be a full success with an 11 total. Boot, boot scoot out of here. I'm gonna call you boot now. <laughs> Whatever. Charmeleon is not a size bigger than him, so it's just gonna be the 1d6. 
That is the maximum on that die, though. So that's gonna be eight double to 16 points of super effective fighting <laughs> damage against Diablo. You love to see it, folks. Sure. That is Pat's turn as the monkey has landed upon the Charmeleon. That will then take us to Luca. Uh, force palm on our big bear. Great. Go ahead and roll the hit. Nine. Nine. Okay, a mixed success, so 2d6 plus two. Nine. So that's 10 points of super effective fighting damage from the force palm. And then also you can automatically inflict damage equal to Lotz's attack as an extra action. So an extra four. So it all in all comes out to 14 points of damage to Chad. All right. Not too shabby. Right, That is Lucas' turn. Then it is your turn, Pearl. Okay. Diablo use fire spin. I'm that monkey. Of course I'm that monkey. Cha-cha. Great, go ahead and roll plus your, I'm assuming you're rolling plus might for that one, since that's your highest one of the ones yes, that he can choose. Yes, please. Great. That's 10. Great, a full success. Go ahead and roll. What'd you roll on that damage? I rolled a six plus five, 11. Ooh, nice. All right, 11. Yes. Great, so that is going to come out to seven double to 14 points of nice. super effective damage as uh, the semi-sage is now wrapped up in this fire spin. Go ahead and roll 1d6. Three. Three, okay, so the semi-sage is going to be uh, trapped in the fire for three turns. Dancing in the flames, Diablo. Cha-cha! Like a good firebender. It's black fire too, so you know. Ooh. Yeah, you you boot scooting now, boot? Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you are afraid. Yeah, yeah, you No, should. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm never afraid. I can see you sweating. The fear doesn't exist for me. All right, that is your turn, which will then take us to Chad the Ursaring. It is going to attempt to covet and try to take the assault vest off of Lotta. And that is going to be a full success. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just Ursaring. So she's not going to have the benefits of that assault vest as he just takes it off and tosses it. That's going to come out to six points of normal damage for her after everything is said and done, which will then take us back up to the top with Pat. After upping a special attack from the nasty plot is going to use disarming voice. Fascinating. Uh Haha. That is going to be a mixed success, though, so dang it, it doesn't get to add the special attack for that. Sorry, but no tomato sauce for you. You get plain noodles. Okay, so that's just going to come out to four super effective points of fairy damage to Diablo. Also, guys, I have no idea what that comeback was. (laughs) But it felt right. I was just going to let it go. (laughs) That is Pat's turn as on its turn. Meow, 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 meow. Since he is surrounded by the flame. The flame! Flame. Go ahead and roll a d6. Six. Plus your special attack. Five, 11. 11 points of damage. So that's going to be seven double to 14 super effective points of fire damage as he's trapped. Nice. In the fire spin. That will then take us back to Luca as Lotza continues to squeeze even though the assault vest has been pulled off of her. She just keeps on squeezing Chad the Ursa Ring. Yeah. Force bomb. Great. Go ahead and roll the hit. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, that is a 10. Flat fi- uh, five. So that's, Ooh, that's a... That's, that's gonna, gonna be a nat- paralyzed. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Okay. I'm gonna roll the damage. Uh, 14. Ooh, Nice. So that's going to be 10 double to 20 points of Whoa, super effective damage. This bear is strong. Little bear is stronger than big bear. This little bear's strong. Mm-hmm. She's strong and good. All right, nice. And uh, fluffy. And that is going to end fluffy. And that's, <laughs> in many situations, the most important part. <laughs> Plus, as an extra action, she can add her damage from the binding. Oh, yeah. So all in all, 24 points of damage as Chad the Ursaring is paralyzed. That's it for Lotza, which then takes us to you, Pearl, with Diablo. Uh, let's do the fire thing again, Diablo. It looks really cool. Yeah! <laughs> That's a 10. 10, a full success. Excellent. Go ahead and roll that damage. 1d6 plus a special attack. That damage. It's a 4 plus 
five, nine. Great, nine, so that's gonna be five double to 10 points. Are you adding your warrior damage? I'm just adding your my ex spittack. Your extra two, oh, well guess what? For these last three things, cause you always add your warrior damage when you're Is when that you're in attack. the damage section of this chart? Damage bonus, is that what it is? Uh, yes. Oh, I I don't add those things. Yes, you have you have plus two dollars because damage bonus. That's that's your. Um, Let it be known, listeners, that if you ever like, how does she do it? I mean, I'm not even adding my full bonuses, yo. Ah, okay, great. So not it was purpose, actually but. it was actually. See, so said you rolled like nine a second ago for that damage, so it actually would have been eleven. Cool. So then minus its special defense would be seven, so fourteen points of super effective damage. Bye so yeah. there you go. All in all, you've dealt. 44 points of damage. In two turns. Accounting for your warrior stuff. Nice. Thank you. All right, cool. Go ahead and roll 1d6, and if it's a bigger number than two, which is the amount of turns it has left in the fire spin. It was six. Great. Six. It is very much on fire. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. All right, Celie, be on hand. And she has a little fire, a fire, uh... A uh, fire hydrant? Firefighter? Yeah, thank like you. Like hat, I'm yes. assuming? Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, she's, she's wearing a firefighter hat. not just like a hat. fire hydrant. No, no I, I would hope not. Not if there's any Lillipups or any other dog Pokemon around. No way. <laughs> Great. That is your turn, though, which is going to take us back to Chad the Ursa Ring, who is paralyzed. So he's going to roll a D6, a 5, so he's able to move. He's going to try another hammer arm. Dang, he's moving slow, though. That's only a six total. Ah. That ain't going to do it. Nope. Okay, so he is not able to, you know, trying not to hit himself while this small bear is just, like, skittering around his body and squeezing uh, and punching. Uh, he's just on enough of a delay that Stephala just... She manages to get out of the way. That will then take us back up to the top with Pat, who uh, is going to try a disarming voice once again, trying to get more out of that special attack. Shoot! Same roll, just natural four. Oh, uh, dang. So, nothing doing there. Oh, wait, but... But... Disarming voice counts a failure as a mixed success, so he at least gets a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, would you look at that? That said, it's not much, because it's just going to come out to four points. Four super effective points of fairy damage against Diablo, which will then take us back to Luca. Okay. Before that, go ahead and roll your damage for that fire spin. Hey, would you look at that? It's a 10. All right, 10. So that's going to be six double to 12 super effective points of fire damage as this black flame continues to envelop Chad. It's singeing his cardigan. Okay, Celie, put that out. Put that out. I don't want to pay for the cardigan. Order, order. It looks like cashmere. <laughs> Simi says just thinks to itself, it's a nice cotton blend. Ah, oh, man, that's his good cardigan. That is We're then. We're putting it out. Yo, no, you, it's going to be fine. <laughs> going to take us to Luca. Let's use the palm of our force. Ah, the palm of your force, of force course, ball. of course. Great, go ahead and roll to hit. Oh no, we might not make it. Oh no, not even with your plus three? Uh, nine, no, we made it. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, nine is gonna be a mixed success, so 2d6 plus two. Eight. Great, so that's gonna be four double to eight super effective points of fighting damage, and she can squeeze as her extra action, so that's all in all gonna be 12 points of damage. That will then take us to Chad's turn as the Ursa Ring is paralyzed Woo! and unable to move. We then go back up to the top. Pat is trying not to let it show, but is, is getting frustrated by the lack of being able to yell this, <laughs> yell this Charmeleon into submission. Uh, so he's going to keep on trying it because honestly, having that fairy move against this bad boy is... It is working. I can't deny it. Okay, that is going to be a mixed success, so still the same. He's nah, he, uh, He's trying to, he's fishing for a full success with this one because his special attack's really high right now. But he can't add it. All right, so that is going to be more this time. That is going to be eight super effective points of fairy damage this time. At the end of his turn, go ahead and roll your fire spin. Ten. Ten, all right. So that is going to be... Yowza. Okay, uh, 20 points of super effective fire damage. Dance, monkey, dance. 
You hear the sound of gyroids somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is Pat's turn, and then we are back at Luca. Ah, what should we do? I wonder. Force bump. <laughs> Great. If it ain't broke. She's got an extra plus two because Chad was just fully paralyzed. Good, because I just rolled a flat four. So what do I add? Great. So plus the extra two. That's going to come out to a nine total because oh, there might be three. thank goodness. Okay. So go ahead and roll your 2d6 plus two. Seven. Oh, uh, lower roll on that one. All right, so that's going to be three double six super effective points of damage plus an extra action squeeze. It's going to deal 10 points of damage all in all to the big bear. Wow, that was uh, anticlimactic. Then Pearl, it is back to you. Fire spin. Oh, no. Six. Ooh, a six, a miss. Ah, uh, bummer. First miss for Diablo on this one as whoosh, he goes, but at this point, Pat just trying to dance it out and get out of the fire spin or at least out of the way a little bit does manage to avoid the blow that time. Switching up my dice. Gotta switch up this juju. That then takes us to Chad the Ursaring. Who rolled a one? So, ah, that's what we like to see, Chad. Thank you. So Chad is still paralyzed as he's like, no! And then we are back up at the top with Pat, who, yeah, at this point is fed up and just is done trying to fish for the full success on the uh, disarming voice, and instead is going for a low sweep, where he's got more of a bonus to hit, and that is literally just barely a seven. So that's just going to be six super effective points of fighting damage. He can't get a full success. He'd be doing so much more if he could. All right, that is... Pat's turn as whoosh. The fire spin continues. Roll dice? Yes, roll your damage. Aw, just a one. Flat one. Eight. Okay, so that's eight, double two, 16 points of damage. Pat's looking rough. Good, he needs to go down. I need to find some good dice again. Ay, ay, ay. Come on now, guys. Let's wrap it up. All right, that's the end of Pat's turn, which takes us to Luca. Force pop, go. I'm doing speedy dice. Oh, that was a 10. Flat oh, 10. Flat 10. Great. Full speedy success. Speedy dice is the way to go. Woo! Uh, 15 total because she, she, she also had the extra plus two. And when I say speedy dice, I mean I'm just rolling with no inhibition. Yes. <laughs> Love that. Rolling damage. No inhibition. Go. Oh, okay. I'll take it 13. All right. 13. So that's going to be nine double to 18 points of damage. Goodbye. Hasta la vega. See you later. Go back from whence you came. All right. <laughs> and then also she can squeeze. We once shall. Again. I feel like since she is smaller than Ursa Ring, I feel like it's less of like a fully around the body squeeze and it's more of she's just like like pushing on pressure points. Death by a thousand paper cuts. That's our style. Ain't that the truth. Yeah. So all in all, with, with a good squeeze, she's going to deal 22 points of damage. Oh, yes, baby bear. Nice, uh, as uh, Chad is also looking pretty woozy. Goodbye, sir. He's gone from jaw to no. <laughs> and then Pearl, it is your turn. Fire, more fire, please. Fire. Cha, cha, cha. Eight. Eight, a mixed success. So go ahead and roll your d6, just plus two. <gasps> Two sixes, rolling with without any uh, inhibitions is the way to go. Well, it's just one D6 for the damage. Oh, dang it. Because you rolled the hit, but okay. it's still six. It's still six. Take so it. it's still max from the die. So that's eight. So that's going to be four double to eight super effective points of fire damage, which is enough to knock out Pat the Simi Sage. Yes, Diablo! Cha -cha! Woo! All right, Sealy, you can you roll in the clean of poo. I'm going to finish up this bear, okay? <laughs> He's like, my pleasure. And then Smokey the bear. Ding. Uh, Ursa Ring? It he feels a, very conflicted right now. Why? See, it was a good seeing one. another Ursa Ring uh, in trouble. Yeah. He's like, I like that, but I don't like that. Distant cousin. They were once rude at that one party. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is your turn as Pat the Simi Sage is KO'd and Seely goes to put him out the rest of the way. Nice. And, and the black flames die out. Uh, but then that takes us to Chad, who can move. And just tries for another hammer arm just to slam down on this little burr. Give up! That is going to be a full success. Oh, come on. So that is going to be, all in all, 20 points of damage yes. minus her defense. So 
That's 17, and it would be doubled, but she's fluffy, so just 17 points of damage to Lotta and just with a like, big hit. Just like that, she, yeah, she was looking just fine, skipping around, and now, little woozy. That is Chad's turn, as that will then take us back to the top of initiative, uh, as it is now back to Luca. Force palm. Great, another force palm. 11. 11, a full success. Yeah. Baby bear wants honey. The bear wants that honey. Bear better have my honey. <laughs> That's a 10. So that is going to be six double to 12 points. 12 points of super effective fighting damage. Plus, as she squeezes, she deals that extra four to make it 16. Yes. As Stuffle squeezes. Her little stuffed arms get bigger. Are you kidding me? And burlier. Are you kidding she me? She was literally, after the fighting tournament, one experience point away. Oh my goodness. From leveling up. And as she She's knocks like, out. I this, am not a baby bear. She gets this final blow just by squeezing just the biggest hug. The biggest hug she's ever getting because she's the biggest she's ever been Whoa! to give the hug. Stuffle. Glows and Lotsa's body spreads out, becoming even more fluffy and huggable, but also deadly as she just gives the biggest bear hug to Ursaring, knocking it out and throwing him to the ground as Lots of the Stuffle evolves into Lots of the Beware. Whoa! She lets out a terrifying shriek of victory. And, and I feel like the shriek like blows me and Luca's hair back. <laughs> And Luca's like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, not so cuddly anymore. That's a big bear. <laughs> Who's the big bear now, punk? All right. And, uh, and I just kind of cozy up next to Scoot. Scoot, just like completely flat expression on his face, just recalls both of the Pokemon to his Pokeballs. And I, like, I blink twice. So that was fun. Ding, yeah, it was ding. cool. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, great. Great for me. My palm is open. Fine. And he ah. hands over the money, slaps it into your palms. I have no I have no issues with getting money from Scoot. <laughs> Scoot does, in fact, fulfill the social contract as he forks over a, a thousand for each of you. A fairly wealthy young lad. His his horned hat is, is the latest fashion. Got a high fashion score, this kid. Is uh, it, though? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Steely talk about it later tonight. Well, it's that thing about fashion where it's like, sometimes it's like, I don't get this whole high fashion thing. Apparently, this oh, is no, the deal. Oh, no, we get high fashion. <laughs> how dare you say that about Steely? But like how, weird fashion. How dare you? Like air quote high fashion. Um, sir, you just keep digging that hole because we'll be living on fashion lane. <laughs> <laughs> but with that... You have emerged victorious over Scoot with his Ursaring and Simi Sage. Who knows? Maybe if we ever see him again, he'll have more familiar Pokemon. We did it! Nice! And Luca gives you a high five. He's like, oh, wow. That that felt good. Really cool. I Great did job. Not, I forgot. I mean, like, we were doing a lot of work with Lotsa before, but man, I did forget that she was really, really just like on the verge. Yeah, no baby bear, no more. No. Wow, we got good pokies. We got great pokies. We're oh, a good team. This is fantastic. You're going to crush it at the gym, Bullet. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Old lots town is coming hero, in. here he comes. Boom. Well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll still try to be low key. But, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. See, they put away the band. Put away the marching. <laughs> order, 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 order. Not now, order, 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 order. I know you've been practicing your drum line. <laughs> But uh, Scoot leaves to go heal his Pokemon elsewhere uh, and roll 2d6 plus instinct. Seven. Seven. As you're walking away and he's walking away in the opposite direction, you just notice him just kind of looking back with those shifty blue eyes a little bit. But. See, hold my, fi- hold my hand. Walk <laughs> with me. Order. Or, or, Everybody or. find a buddy. But regardless of that, Luca also goes and picks up uh, the assault vest that got pulled off of uh, Lotsa. He's like, all right, well, it's a little tighter fit now. That is a, that's actually, I think, how that's supposed to look now that you're about the same size as Hercules. I like that. That's good. So with that level up and evolution, Lotsa is now level 13. She was literally one point away from the level up 
when we went into this fight. So she's now level 13. She has gone from a stuffle to a beware. Lots of hugging bear. So her Evo tier is now B3. With her points from leveling up, she has put those into HP and attack. So she's now got HP 6, attack 8, and everything else is 3s across the board. That means her max health is now up to 108. Her friendship also went up, and so her might is now 4. And as part of leveling up, she got to learn a new move. So she picked up something from the Ursa Ring and learned Hammer Arm. But that is what Lotsa gets. With that, the two of you uh, can continue making your way along. Do you want to do anything else here on Route 3, or would you like to go into the city? I think let's go into the city. Excellent. Any first order of business as you go there? Well, Luca, you said we should keep a low profile. Uh, it's it's um, probably a good idea. So, where yeah. should we stay? Just at the Poké Center? Do you think that's safe? Uh, I mean, Pokemon Center is probably fine. You know, okay. we'll just you know be <gasps> low key and stop everything. What? We gotta go see Big. Oh yeah, let's go see Big. And I like to imagine that it's later at night, at, like at evening, and we go and see Big at the aquarium. Great. Uh, it's closer to closing, uh, but you perfect. You flash your Very badge. Pearl at the front desk and uh, Elijah, the ticket booth clerk, uh, lets you in. Uh, Luca just pays the entrance fee because he doesn't have uh, the badge yet. But you all go in and you go to see Big's tank. In Big's tank. Oh, Luca, I'm going to show Big all of my Pokemon. Oh, yeah, no, that's Every a great single idea. one. So we may have to go back and forth a couple times, but that's, I bet I can get it done. I'm going like, to stay here then because I don't want to pay the admission fee it's all like those if, times. That's good. You can hold my line, and if a little kid tries to get up too close to the glass, you can just say, hey, we're doing business here. He's in a meeting, <sighs> meeting all of his family. That makes sense. Because big is my Pokemon, but I, in my life. Sure, sure. I got the backpack. Yeah, you do. I love that thing. You, um, flash, you flash the backpack. We round the corner through the exhibit. Big! As you it's round the corner, girl. you round the corner and see the big octillery tank. And inside it is a regular octillery. I knew it! Oh, oh, come on! I, okay, in my, my mind, I'm so upset, number one. Oh, in my mind, in my heart, and in Pearl's mind and heart. And also, oh, oh, in my mind, Pearl would always watch the camera to fall asleep sometimes. The, like, the, ah, what is this? Luca? Yep? I know you said keep a low profile. I think we need to do this solo because I'm about to raise the biggest stink you've ever seen. Yeah, no, it looks like you're going on the warpath. You should leave now. No, no, I'm here. Hey, everybody! What is this? I am poking that tank. Hey, hey, who are you? Hey, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Don't touch his rock. Don't touch that rock. It's not your rock. Hey, what is this cheap, cheap chicken in here? <laughs> I didn't order calamari, but now I just got this goop. <laughs> Aquamarine, you big fat liar. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says that. And I'm going to wear it. Hey! Hey! Pearl, you start to just go on the warpath, marching away from the exhibit, and the sign says, Welcome to the Bolet Aquarium, large. But that's where we'll end this episode. I knew it. I knew it was going to happen, and I, I, like, something in my soul knew about it. Uh, but why did I let her? Oh, why didn't I just take that Pokemon when I should have taken that Pokemon? I should have taken that Pokemon. Oh, I'm upset. Oh, my choices. Oh, my life choices are catching up with me. Oh, ah, I'm angry. Hello friends, 
Jonah here from Quest Company Jr., popping in to say that the show that you've just been listening to is part of the Podicon Go podcasting network, a group of independent creators committed to creating, distributing, and supporting content that's family-friendly and fun for all ages. If you enjoy this show, be sure to subscribe on your preferred podcasting platform and show some love with a five-star rating and review. Every time you do, you are helping support the creation of more family-friendly content. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Postcard from Poor on Quest Company Jr. Postcards from Pearl is a fan-made podcast and is not affiliated with Nintendo, Game Freak, or the Pokemon Company.